Good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome to St. James this evening for our service of Holy Communion. A warm welcome to you uh, if you're gathered here in the building, and a very warm welcome if you are joining in our worship this evening online. Uh, everything that you'll need for our service today will be in these booklets. Um, can I invite you just to sit for a moment as we uh, begin our time together? Because uh, I'm aware that uh, for some of us, it's perhaps the first time uh, back in the building uh, since restrictions eased a little bit just over uh, a week or so ago. And um, just to say that really as we've been going along all of our uh, journey together over these last uh, 18 months or so, um, our top priority really has been to care for one another, uh, especially as we gather to worship God. And of course that uh, remains unchanged even though uh, restrictions have changed somewhat. And so uh, what we've decided to do is to change things step by step and little by little um, and not to just um, change everything all at once. And so we're going to be working together and invite you to um, share any thoughts and feelings you have about how things are working. Um, and we will, uh, as we go along together, uh, make steps and changes. So uh, for the moment, we are asking uh, people to consider uh, very strongly wearing their face covering still. Of course, uh, that's not a uh, must. It's simply a request. And if you uh, feel that you don't want to do that, then uh, that is okay as well. One of the things we are able to do again very happily uh, is to sing. And so we're going to have the opportunity to do that together this evening. And again, uh, if I could ask you to, to wear your masks for that, if you could, uh, that would be good. As we uh, go along and as we uh, worship together, we are welcomed into God's presence. And we meet in his name. And our service begins on page three. As we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's join together in the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to God this evening as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask for his forgiveness and peace. And so we pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's stand together and let's praise God in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's 
let's sit and uh, share a moment of quiet prayer together. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Chris is very kindly going to come and bring us our first Bible reading this evening. Thank you, Chris. The first reading comes from the second book of Samuel, chapter 1. In the spring of the year, the time when kings go out to battle, David sent Joab with his officers and all Israel with him. They ravaged the Ammonites and besieged Rahat, but David remained at Jerusalem. It happened one late one afternoon when David rose from his couch and was walking about on the roof of the king's house that he saw from the roof a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. David sent someone to inquire about the woman. It was reported, this is Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. So David sent messengers to fetch her, and she came to him, and he lay with her. Now she was purifying herself after her period. Then she returned to her house. The woman conceived, and she sent and told David, I am pregnant. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it to by the hand of Uriah. In the latter, he wrote, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hardest fighting and then draw back from him so that he may be struck down and, dead and die. The thing that David had done displeased the Lord, and the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, there were two men in a certain city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. He brought it up and grew up, grew it up with, with him and with his children. It used to eat of his meagre fare and drink from his cup and lie in his bosom and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveller to the rich man, and he was loath to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the wayfarer who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared that for the guest who had come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he, had, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your, your master's house and your master's wives unto your bosom, and give you, gave you the house of Israel and, the, and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have added as much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house, for you have despised me and 
I have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, I will raise up trouble against you from within your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall be with you, your wives, in the sight of this very son. For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan said to David, Now the Lord has put away your sin, you shall not die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The second reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, When he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says, he ascended, what does it mean but that he has also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of and ministry for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love we must grow up in every way to, into him who is, it, is the head, into Christ. From whom the whole body, joined and knitted together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's stand and sing together.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Our Gospel reading this evening comes from John chapter 6, beginning to read at verse 24. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but the, for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please do have a seat, everyone. May I speak this evening according to the will of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, just a few moments ago, Chris shared with us the story of David and Bathsheba from 2 Samuel chapter 11. And you can find that on page 6 of your service sheets. And this painful story is a turning point in David's life. Not only a turning point in David's life, but really it's a turning point in the whole of the Old Testament. Because up until now we have seen God guiding David. We've seen his rise as king. We've seen him reigning in Jerusalem as a shepherd over God's people. But in these verses, David becomes Goliath. He uses people, he bullies, he manipulates, he assaults and he murders. And from here on, the life of the Israelites falls into internal warfare among David's descendants. The north and the south split apart and the people eventually end up in exile. So as we come to this story this evening, we will be conscious that the Bible touches even on the most difficult parts of life. And I'd like us to look together at this story from three points of view, to listen to what it tells us about God and what it tells us about ourselves. The first point of view is that of David himself. And for David, this story is about power. David has the power not to go to battle if he doesn't want to. And so he doesn't go. David has the power to command Bathsheba. And so he has her sent to him. David has the power to ensure that Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, doesn't uncover his crime. And so he has him killed. Power seduces David. And yet, mesmerised by what he can do, David seems to lose the capacity to make good choices. Perhaps he desires intimacy and love, 
but David's desire sees him embark down a path of rape, deception and murder. Nothing can justify David's actions. And so for David, this is not only about power, but about pride. He gets himself into a dire situation and he keeps on digging. He drags others into his lies and causes untold hurt. He takes an awfully long time to realise that he is in the wrong. Perhaps he thinks that a king can do no wrong. None of us here this evening is a king of a chosen people. But surely we all need to discern how to use the power that we do have rather than bemoaning the power that we don't have. Surely we all know what it is to desire one thing so much that it obscures our commitment to what is good and worthy. Surely we all need to speak the truth about life, even if that means admitting that we are in the wrong. The second point of view is that of Nathan. Nathan shows David the truth about himself. Yet he doesn't rant or rail, he tells a parable. He knows that he's speaking the truth, and so he doesn't have to shout. Yet David is so far out of touch that he doesn't realise the parable is about him. You are the man, says Nathan, perhaps some of the most confronting and arresting words in all of Scripture. Nathan is brave. He's risking his life. He could end up like Uriah. But Nathan gives us an example of how to confront the tyrants in our own lives or in our political and social worlds. Nathan has the truth, yes, but he also has imagination and empathy. David is persuaded and simply admits, I have sinned. The third perspective in this story is Bathsheba. Although actually she's only mentioned by name once in the whole story. Other times she's called a woman or a daughter or a wife. And at no stage are we given any account of Bathsheba's own feelings. We can only speculate what it must have been like for her. But in Bathsheba, we have the perspective of those whose humanity is considered of no account. No one blames David for not taking her feelings into consideration. That is not what is at issue in these verses. But Bathsheba bears witness to the painful truth that there are so many people historically that there are still even those people today who simply don't seem to matter who are used by others and written out of the story. We may want to give them a voice, but we can't assume to know what they want to say. So this is a story about power and sin, about courage and witness. It highlights the people that society ignores and history forgets. But this story is more than that. Because in these verses, we come face to face with God. Because in Jesus, God was the one who was considered of no account. God was the one who died a humiliating death in a forgotten corner of the Roman Empire because of the pride of others. In Jesus, God was the one who, like Nathan, held up a mirror to the powers of his day and brought them the truth at the cost of his life. In Jesus, God was like Bathsheba, innocent and subject to the whim of tyrants. Jesus told parables that show us who we are and who God is. And Jesus enters this parable as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So whether we are a respected person who is confronting our own sinfulness and cruelty, 
whether we are someone standing up for the truth or a forgotten person used to being overlooked. This story is telling us that Jesus is at the heart of our struggle for identity, for faithfulness and meaning. That is what it means to come face to face with God. Thanks be to God. Amen. to join me in standing as we declare our faith in the words of the creed on page 10 together. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so, as we sit together in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Father God, whose power is made perfect in weakness, whose service Pray for all those who hold and exercise power, whether close to home, for ourselves, for those in positions of authority all over the world. We pray that those who exercise power and influence over others would do so with your priorities at their heart.
set as a seal upon your heart to all those who are bowed down and grieving in body, mind, or spirit. We especially pray this evening for Alistair Rowe, for Paul Towers, for Margaret White, for Anne. Shall we stand to share the peace together? We celebrate today that Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So whether here in the building or gathered online, we wish each other peace from wherever we are.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Forgiving and restoring God, we thank and praise you because you make the gifts of your creation into the means of our redemption, and you turn our fallen folly into the occasion of your risen glory. In Christ the Lamb, you gave us everything you had. Though we strayed from your ways and killed your Holy One, yet you set before us this glorious banquet in which that crucified and risen Lamb reconciles us with you. And so we live in gratitude for your mercy and in praise of your grace, joining the company of heaven in their constant hymn as we say together, <coughs> Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Faithful Father, in Christ you give us the food that will never perish, but endures for eternal life. Give us this bread always, that coming to you your people will never be hungry, and believing in you, your people will never be thirsty. Bless us with the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, that this bread and this wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all, make your church humble, gentle and patient living a life worthy of its calling. You summon apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ. Empower your people for service and build your church up in love. Draw all who look to you with hope into unity of faith, growing together into the full stature of Christ. Renew your servants in the gifts of ministry and bless any who are labour and heavy laden by surrounding them with the joyous companionship of your saints until all who share in one Lord, one faith and one baptism are one in unity before your throne. Everlasting God, Trinity of perpetual peace. Amen. As we continue in prayer, let's sit together. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. So you're all very welcome this evening to come forward and to receive the bread uh, as we share together. And uh, John and Rachel, who are our stewards, will be guiding people forward uh, as we share together. If you're joining uh, our worship online this evening, you might like to use the prayer of spiritual communion, which you'll be able to find at the top of page 17 in our service sheets. But this evening, come to this table, not because you must, but because you may. Not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Not because you have arrived, but because you are still on a journey. Come because you love the Lord a little and want to love him more. But above all, come because he loves you and gave himself for you.
together in the prayer after communion at the bottom of page 70. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. everyone for being with us this evening whether here in the building or online it's been a joy to gather in God's presence with you and uh, may I uh, commend to you the new sheet for this week you'll be able to uh, get a copy on your way out if you haven't uh, got one on your way in there's a copy uh, available on the website as well um, not necessarily anything to uh, flag up particularly uh, but just to uh, let you know that that is there for this week the other thing we have to do uh, this evening together is to publish some bands of marriage. So it's my uh, privilege to publish the bands of marriage between uh, Rebecca Louise Stevens, uh, resident in the parish of St. Mary and St. John Camp Hill, but on the electoral roll of this parish, and uh, Christopher John Gettings, also a uh, resident in the parish of St. Mary and St. John Camp Hill, but on the electoral roll of this parish. Let's pray for Becky and Chris as we uh, remember them this evening. Father God, we thank you for the gift of marriage and we ask your blessing on Becky and Chris as they uh, come to their wedding day uh, in a few weeks' time. We thank you for the journey that you have brought them on together and we ask that you would give them everything they need as they prepare to begin this new chapter of their lives together. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So as God sends us out into our weeks today, let's pray for his, God's, uh, for his blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.